Hey guys, we're going to be putting together the 10 minute amp. This is a very simple guitar speaker amplifier. It's capable of up to 7 watts and it is in some configurations incredibly loud. So it does benefit from an EQ pedal or a tone control on the input or a boost pedal on the input. And when you boost the input, um, the, the output is incredibly loud. You, you can annoy a neighbour, it is so loud. So this is my build. I just etched this pattern on the top with um, a Dremel. Um, and uh, you can see the LED is here. There's the on off switch, volume control, guitar input, speaker output and DC uh, input. For the DC, you can use any power pack that you have. Um, so if you have one just lying around, anywhere from, anywhere from 9 volts to 18 volts, I think you can actually go even below 9 volts. I think even 5 volts will power it. Obviously, the higher the voltage um, on, the, on the DC that you use, uh, the more wattage you'll get out of it and the louder the, the guitar amp will be. We've found from testing that just a boost on the input is enough to get even on 9 volts is enough to get this amp incredibly loud. And for what it is, for how simple it is, it has a pretty respectable tone as well. So here's a quick sound sample, just so you can quickly hear it before we put it together. We've got a lot to do, so let's get moving. So there's two build options for the 10 minute amp. There's the PCB on its own, or there's the PCB with all the components included. The only other thing you'll need will be a metal enclosure. It needs to be metal so that you can ground it. So if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I usually use blue tack when I do these little projects. It's just, it's just a quick and easy way to um, hold things in place. And although this is very simple, um, it's a very simple project to put together. Um, there's just a few things that you need to be aware of. Um, some of these components are polarized, which means they must, they've got a plus and a minus and they have to go in a particular way. These electrolytic caps are polarized. The film, film caps are not polarized. The resistors are not polarized. The diode is polarized. It has a stripe on it. So you just gotta make sure you put these ones in the, around the right way. And the LED is also, um, is also polarized. It needs to go in the right way around. The switch is actually not polarized. You can put that in either way around. So let's start with the, with the, the, the smallest components, well, all, all the passives. So the capacitors, uh, the electrolytic capacitors, film capacitors, and resistors and diode. If you follow this method that I'm doing, you'll find it's probably a little bit easier. So let's start with those. So if you are building the kit, you'll be following along with the, with the build dock. That can be downloaded on our website and it will show you in uh, the positions where you need to put the components. You can see that the positions have um, these um, reference designators which is basically just tells you which capacitor goes where and which resistor goes where. It's kind of like join the dots. 
So we can see on the build dock that R1 and R2 are 10k resistors. So one of these resistors is actually a different value. Um, so it's quite easy to work out. You don't need a multimeter to work this out. Um, you just pull out the one that's the different value is 3.3k. So just put that one aside and do the two 10k's first. So 10k in position R1 and R2. And then the last resistor, which is the one that's different from the other two, uh, a 3.3k resistor that goes in R3. Next we'll do the film capacitors. These capacitors are the exact same value, so it doesn't matter which position you put them in. And they'll go in C1 and C4. Next we'll do some of the polarized components, so the diode and the capacitors. The capacitors have a white stripe on the side that indicates the negative. And as you can see on the PCB, it will show you the positive uh, on, the, on the silk screen, so you've got to put it the right way around. So the stripe will go on the side that doesn't have the positive, like that. And the big one being the 220, 220, uh, 220 microfarad capacitor will go in that position and the little one, which is the 10 microfarad capacitor, will go in this position. And again, just make sure you put the stripe around the right way. Next we'll do the diode and the, um, the diode is polarized as well. So just make sure that you put the stripe, that the, on this one, the stripe matches up with the stripe. So you'd be putting it in this way. Next we'll do the IC. Just make sure when you put it through that you don't bend any of the legs. There's quite a few of them and it's relatively easy to do. So just be careful when you put that one through. I recommend at this point when you finish soldering, just to double check your soldering's um, okay. A couple of um, solder points that don't look so good, so I'm just going to re reheat those just to make sure that it's, I've made proper contact. Up till now we've been soldering everything onto the front of the PCB, but the next two components we're going to be soldering onto the back of the PCB. You can tell which side the component needs to be soldered onto because it has a um, silk screen image um, of the actual component. So in this case, we'd be putting the potentiometer, which is your amp volume control, um, into the circuit like this, and the switch will go on here, and the LED will go onto into this position, but we won't be doing that until um, later on. There's a little trick with that, which I'll show you later on. So let's solder in the switch and the volume control. As always, when you finish soldering, just double check and make sure you've made good connections on the pads. You'll notice these ones I've left sort of half soldered. Um, I'd actually encourage you to do the same thing, just as long as you've got, make sure you've got a solid connection on all three. That's all you need. You don't need to fill the pad. Um, and often, if you fill the pad, you have to apply quite a lot of heat. And sometimes these switches don't like that. They have an epoxy on the back, um, which can melt. So. Um, just make sure you've got some good solid connections. Same with the mounting points on the potentiometer. So just put the six wires um, on these on these points now. Just to add six wires. You can color code them so that you can. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier to work out what is what when you're going to wire them up later on. So that's all the PCB components done. Um, now we can drill the holes for the enclosure. So there's a little drill layout in the build dock. Um, that you can print off. Cut this out and stick it to the front of the enclosure. Just make sure when you tape your drill template to the enclosure um, that you do it the right way around. I know these words are upside down on the enclosure but um, we'll, we'll fix that for the build dock but um, this is the right, way, the right way to do it. So you'll have your power LED on off switch and volume control here. So while we're at the drill press, it's a good idea just to test fit this PCB into the enclosure. As you can see, this heatsink is now not touching the bottom, um, so that really does need to be screwed down into place. So what I'm going to do is just get it into the right spot, put a little dot where the hole will go, and then drill the hole for the um, heatsink as well. Just make sure you get your LED in the right spot so you can see it on the outside there, and then you can solder everything up. So the ground on the guitar input is this one here, uh, this one's the guitar in. So for the DC jack, just make sure that you wire this one the, the right way around. So it depends on what power pack you're using. So for instance, my power pack has a center positive, you, can, you might be able to see there, it says it's center positive. Um, so the little one is the center and the, uh, the big lug, sorry I should say, the big lug is 
is the barrel. So just make sure you wire that one, uh, wire it around the right way. Depending on what power pack you use, sometimes they're the other way around. So just double check the diagram on your power on your power pack um, and make sure that it's the right way around. So that's it guys, the 10 minute amp build. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I actually made it within 10 minutes because um, there was a lot to get through. Um, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. Kits will be available on the web store and I'll leave the link to the kits um, in the description below. If you want to take a look at the schematic, um, that will also be available in the build of materials. Uh, sorry, the build doc as well, you can check it out there. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more and give me a like if you like the video. See you in the next one. Cheers guys.